Freight cars have grown considerably over the last 100 years, and the boxcar is no exception. One of the best examples is the evolution of the standard 40-foot car to the massive 60-foot high-cube boxcars that dominate the rails today. One of the largest producers of these is Gunderson, and their latest is the 7550 high cube boxcar. It's one of the latest and greatest developments of the high-capacity freight cars. Atlas announced the brand new model of the 7550 high cube car in their September 2019 catalog, and after several delays from factory issues to COVID, the cars were finally arrived in February of 2023. This initial release only includes the generic TTX leasing paint schemes in the Red Heritage logo, but features 12 road numbers. The MSRP on the models is $59.95, but discounts can be found bringing the price per car closer to $40. Today we'll be looking at T-Box 663810. This is a rather newly built car in 05 of 2017, so it's still on the rails looking factory fresh. Starting off on the B end of the car, the road name and road number are printed towards the top with several other small printing. The white portion is the areas of excess height that fall under the car's plate F height restrictions. The ends of the car feature separately applied wire grab irons about halfway down the sides. Just under the grab irons is the brake wheel and brake wheel assembly. Both of these are separately applied plastic components. The brake chain has some good definition running from the assembly down to the slack adjuster on the underside of the car. On either side of the brake wheel are these separately applied ladders. These are a plastic component but are very fine almost matching the wire grab irons shown above. The edge metal crossover platform is just below the ladders. Since this is the brake wheel side, the crossover platform has a notch taken out for the brake chain to pass through. Another separately applied metal detail is the coupler cut bar. This piece is attached to a hard point on the body to the underside of the draft gear box. The coupler is a standard metal coupler similar to a KD number no. 5, but not sure on the exact manufacturer. It does come equipped with the magnetic trip pins. Both sides of the freight car are essentially the exact same. The only difference between the two is the addition of the air retainer valve tucked up under the sill on one of the sides. The main spotting feature for the car is the structural horizontal and vertical ribs that dominate the view of this car. This specific car is unique to most of Gunderson's other high capacity box cars with the addition of the horizontal ribs. The look of this grid style ribs really gives off old southern waffle boxcar sides and is a nice refresh to other contemporary boxcars. Other final details include these separately applied side ladders on either end of the car. The ends of the boxcar also include the stirrup steps just below the ladders. In between the fourth and fifth vertical ribs are the door stops. These molded on details prevent the doors from over traveling on the prototype. The doors themselves have some details as well. This prototype features the double plug door design with other separately applied door roller details on each one. The doors are painted black and feature a lot of fine white printing matching the prototype. Lastly, this is a good chance to check out the side profile of the trucks. These are the Barber S2 100 ton truck variants. These feature good molded on roller bearing details as well as molded on casting features. The roof at first glance appears to be very plain and ordinary, but it's actually pretty neat. Three of the roof panels on each side feature the Stan Ray X style panels while the interior panels are more of the traditional diagonal style. These two different styles of roof panels really give a split look to the roof. It's a nice attention to detail from Atlas. The vertical ribs that connect each panel have some good molded on rivet detail as well. They're finely done and owners really have to get relatively close to even notice they're there. Flipping the car over exposes all the underbody detail that you can't really see while the car is moving down the rails. The largest of these is actually a molded on detail, but the bottom of the floor. This detail isn't very exciting, but is very well done and is throughout the entire underside, featuring the plank and rivet details. As expected with the Atlas Masterline, the major braking components are all well done. The first of these to check out is the triple valve. The triple valve is attached to a plate situated between support beams. The valve has several pipes leading from the valve back to the piston and receiver. The largest underbody detail is the air tank receiver being tucked up between the two support beams. The receiver has two air lines, both leading back to the triple valve. The air plumbing lines are very nicely done, being wire components allow them to be extremely fine and scales down really well. The brake piston is on the same side as the triple valve, just being slightly off center. The piston connects between the air side of the system and the mechanical linkage. The brake linkage runs down the entire length of the car body, primarily attached to the center sill. The linkage details are separately applied and made from plastic bits, with smaller support pieces being made from wire details. 
The A and B ends are pretty much the same with the only detail difference being the lack of a brake wheel and brake wheel assembly on the A car and thus the crossover platform is non-notched as well. The model comes in at 8.5 inches long so the NMRA recommended weight would be 5.25 ounces. The actual weight of the model was found to be 6.81 ounces or 193 grams. This is a difference of 1.56 ounces to the heavier side. The metal wheels were compared to the KD wheel gauge and it was found that all the wheels were at the correct gauge. The cars were knocked over slightly to check for body wobble and it was found that all the cars did have a slight wobble to them even after adjusting for three-point suspension. Both the couplers were measured to the KD height gauge and it was found that both couplers were at the correct height. There was a little bit of slack in the coupler box and it saw that the couplers dropped slightly to the correct height so that if these were ever tightened up it might be a little high for you. For the scoring section of the review, the score will be broken down into several categories, each with their own points, adding up to 100 possible points. The packaging of the model is shipped in the classic Atlas Masterline box, hard plastic blister pack, and soft plastic liner. The accuracy of this model is fairly well done. There is quite a number of prototype photos as this is a contemporary car, so a lot of photographic evidence. Everything seems to match fairly well. TTX placed this logo for these cars in 2016, and most of them were built over the next year, so these are going to be very modern new cars. The paint on the model is very well done. I think the TTX base yellow is actually pretty accurate, specifically under those daylight temperature lightings. Really gives off a good looking base. Atlas did a great job of making sure all the printing and paint over the rib detail was uniform and didn't have any missing aspects. The only thing I thought they could have improved on is that the road number and road name probably should have been printed on the sides of the trucks. All these details are fairly good here. At a quick glance, it appears most of the features are there. A lot of separately applied details utilize brass or wire components, and there is quite a bit of molded on details like the rivet details that's not really seen unless you're extremely close to the model. That being said, there were two issues I saw. First of these was the lack of a train line air hose, and I thought this was pretty unacceptable, especially at this price point. And these cars do utilize a different style of train line air hose from what's available on most aftermarket parts. So that's just going to add to the difficulty when trying to bring this car up to snuff, especially on a $60 freight car. The other thing I noticed was the lack of rotating roller bearing caps really on a car of this price probably should have had them, especially on a brand new release. The operations of this car are good as well. 36 inch metal wheels provide good tracking and the die cast standard size couplers provide good stability between the cars. The cars were weighted above the NRA recommendations, but a lot of the cars didn't have a slight wobble issue. Most of the cars did not arrive with a three point suspension. And even when the trucks were tightened down, they did still seem to wobble and sway when moving down the track, looking very unstable. The couplers, trucks and wheels just talked about the 36 inch metal wheels all were found to be engaged. They ride on the Barber S2 100 ton trucks that have good cast on detail. The couplers provided were the standard size metal couplers, both of which were at the correct height, but they weren't very snug in the coupler box and kind of sloped down to the correct height. There's not really a good way of tightening down the box unless you glue it. So if you put on another coupler or a longer shank coupler, then you might have some low clearance issues. That being said, the cars were delivered with the correct coupler heights. Also, having a pretty premium car coming in at $60, I felt like scale metal couplers probably would have been a better choice, especially because Atlas has used them in the past on other Masterline cars. The values of these cars I thought was pretty fair. When I first got the cars, I was a little bit disappointed with the price to detail ratio, but kind of looking at all the facts, I think these are closer to fair. At the $60 price point, it's quite steep, but the discounts bring this car closer to a more affordable car. That being said, there's definitely a few more features that are left up to me to fix on a rather premium car. And finally, the miscellaneous section, not really anything else. I just wanted to retouch that it is a very expensive and very well detailed car and potential buyers should consider the pros and cons before purchasing the model. Adding up all the points gives an 89 out of 100 or a solid B plus rating. And when comparing the Atlas 60 foot Gunderson 7550 boxcar to other recently reviewed models, the boxcar ends up just under halfway down the list for Atlas's second appearance on the review sheet. I think this car is a great example of how the model train market has really evolved over the last few years and what we're going to see happen in the future where these manufacturers are going for extremely premium models at a very high price, but yet there's still a few flaws and I feel like this Atlas model is no different.
Unfortunately, there's just a few shortcomings. The paint was really nice. The details are overall pretty good. You're just missing a few key features. The train line air hoses and rotating roller bearing caps really to just call itself a premium model. That being said, I think this still is the best 60 foot boxcar on the market with great molded on details and separately applied aspects. I think this car would be an amazing product if it was about 10 to $15 cheaper and have a shot at a top 10 model, but that just didn't pan out this time. I am still pretty satisfied with my purchase of these three cars. I think the coupler boxes are gonna be an issue in the future and hopefully they can continue on development of these non-horizontal versions to give more opportunities for other modelers just because this horizontal rib version was a special order for TTX and kind of puts modelers in a confined box in terms of what they can or can't get. But that's all I got for you guys this time. Let me know what you guys think about the car. This one kind of fell under the radar there for a while and it took three or four years to really get to market and people kind of forgot about it, but I know that because I did, but let me know what you guys think about this. Hopefully Atlas can make some improvements for the second run, especially with these high costs. But that's all I got for you guys this time. Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.